Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video here a day a little bit late, but I wanted to talk about the part one and part 1.5 of Memorial Pickup Summons. I'm here a little bit late. I was originally going to do this yesterday, but I was busy with work and I wasn't able to complete it in time before uh, my mom came home and at that point I didn't want to wake her up from sleep because I record these late as hell as night. <laughs> but anyway, I'm here late, so let's go right into it, huh? Uh, if, but the people who already wanted to summon for this have already summoned. Obviously, if you love Da Vinci and you love Musashi, this is your best chance to get them. So go for it. Shine crazy. Uh, shine like a diamond. I support you in all your endeavors. But for everyone else who's maybe a little bit hesitant, let's actually look at the banners. So we have a summoning campaign one and we have summoning campaign two. One which features Leonardo Da Vinci. We have Artoria Pendragon Altar. AKA the saber that I constantly forget exists because Fago also seems to forget that this saber exists. And Gorgon. And then for summoning campaign two, we have Musashi. We have Emiya Altar. And we have Queen of Sheba, AKA. Oh, careful. Why am I not remembering Queen of Sheba's name right now? Castor. No, it's just Sheba. That's right. That's right. I thought that for some reason that was her it's a code name, but it's not. And then there's also some rate up craft offices such as uh, Grand New Year, Dumplings Over Flowers, Dangerous Beast, Halloween Arrangement, uh, Emerald Float, King Joker Jack, Caldea Special Investigations Unit, and Simply Crimson. And obviously the, fir the first four I mentioned are for part one and the other one is part two. So let's look into the units. We're gonna start with this one because this one's the saddest one. We're gonna look at Saber Altar. There she'll see she's story locked, meaning that you can only get her if you're summoning on a story banner, or specifically a banner which tells you that they're going to be having story units on it. What are story lock units? Basically, they're limited with an extra step. <laughs> they're sometimes more limited than limited. It feels like, um, and yeah, this is one of them. This is Saber Altar or a Tortoria Pen Dragon or however you want to pronounce her name. It does have a costume which is a very good one. It is this one. Fantastic costume. Honestly, worth owning the unit just for this costume. <laughs> but her kit itself is one quick, two arts, two buster. Her first skill is a mana burst, a one turn 50% up to buster. Terrible. Terrible. Instinct, which eventually turns into Twilight Star A, or is Twilight Star A, depending on when you see this. Turns on MP gauge by 20% gain crit stars. 20 crit stars, 20% MP gauge. Okay. Charisma E. Crease party's attack for three turns. 12% attack. Awful. Straight up awful. Passive skills are Magic Resistance B. Her pen skill for the third one is Anti Rider, attack damage aptitude. She really hates Iskander. She has not forgotten the words that he said to her. And then we have Noble Phantasm Excalibur Morgan. Three hits, Buster. Deals damage to all enemies, and then charge your own MP gauge. I'm not even going to dignify this by saying the MP levels. This unit is bad. This unit is very bad. There's no nice way of sugarcoating this. It's a very bad unit. The people who love Saber Altar and this unit specifically deserve better. She's an extremely integral. This is okay. So this has been a problem for a while, because we had to we dealt with it with original saber. Because believe it or not, there was a time where the original saber, the Fate Stay Night poster girl for many, um, and some for for others, just the actual mascot for Fate in general. To be honest, um, for a very long time she was bad. She was terrible. She was one of the worst units, and now she's extremely good. The problem is, is that they made her extremely good, and then they forgot to make the four-star version of her also good. So this one needs buffs. So that's all I have to say. It's actually, it's actively easier to get the five-star version, I'll say. And the five-star version is better. Uh, the only people who are getting her are the people who are dedicated to trying to have her. And I don't need to remind them how bad this unit is. They know how bad this unit is. They wish she was better. We'll leave it at that. But yeah, story locked. So if you're a big fan of her, this is a good time to get her. And then we'll go into Gorgon. Gorgon is another story locked unit. This one from After You Complete Babylonia. Uh, Gorgon. No fancy costume here. She's one quick two arts, two buster. 
Then we have here for her first skill, Monstrous Strength A+, which eventually turns into Huge Monstrosities Outrage EX, which is a better version of that skill because it is 50%, uh, increases its own attack for four attacks for two turns, increases its own critical star absorption of Buster Crush for one turn, it's 50% attack up for four attacks in th for two turns, okay. Buster absorption is up by 600%. Still better than this one, which was just a 50% increase to attack for one turn. That is technically better. Dominic Mu- uh, Dominic. <laughs> Shout out to Dominic Mysterio. Demonic Mutation B. Grant self guff status for one time, five turns. Increase on crit damage for three turns. 50% crit damage is pretty nice. 3,000 HP comebacks when Guts is triggered. Five turns is a decent length, and this comes back every seven turns when at level 10. So I'd say pretty pretty nice. Not the best Guts skill, but it's not the worst. Mystic Eyes A++. Chance to petrify one enemy for one turn. P uh, petrify is similar to stun, but unlike stun, this effect ignores stun resistance and stun success rate buffs as well. And at level 10, it's a 105% chance of it happening, which is a pretty good chance. Uh, passive skills. Avenger B, Oblivion Correction C, and Self-Replenishment Magic A, the basics for Avengers. Third skill is a uh, anti-rider attack, another person just out of for riders. And a Noble Phantasm, which eventually gets this right here, or upgrades into this is uh, a buster with three hits, deals damage to all enemies, charges a party's NP gauge by 15%, 400% damage at level one, and if you have her MP5, it is 600%. She also inflicts curse for five turns to them, and then that's it. And yeah, that's Gorgon. Um, I have Gorgon, I like using Gorgon. I don't really have much to say about Gorgon, other than I like Gorgon. I kind of wish that there was maybe a little bit more to her, like, these two skills could probably use a buff of some kind. Um, if I'm going to be using an AoE Avenger, it's typically one of the... I think that's the, the main issue with Gorgon, is that they're simply just better Avengers with AoE. Like, if you want to use an AoE Avenger, you have Dantes, you have... Uh, well, in Celiar, you might not always be better, but... You do have, well, under some conditions, you have Nobunaga. You have Space Ishtar, though. That's maybe the, actually the biggest one. You have Kama, and then you have some, eventually some other ones. Actually, there's not that many. But funny enough, still, it's not enough. Even with a very limited category, there's still others that I would prefer to use over her. And, uh, as I've said beforehand, because there's only, their really only bonus is against rulers, that makes it really tough. That means that if they want to compete with other AoE units, they have to really be bringing it in terms of damage. She just doesn't bring it. And also because of the way Buster is right now, um, Buster takes advantage of the fact that they can loop their skills, and none of her skills really have an ability that lets her gain NP back, so she won't be able to NP again. So, yeah, I like Gorgon, but she's not, she's probably not top priority for many, but I like her. Look at her. Who, what's not to like? What's not to like about this, I ask you? Sometimes that's enough for some people. Da Vinci, another limited servant, who is technically story related. Did they ever give Da Vinci an alternate? No. They got April Fools. I love this April. I love this Rio Da Vinci. But anyway, let's go into Da Vinci. Active skill 1, Natural Born Genius EX. Grand self gut status for one time, three turns. 85% chance to increase on MP damage for one turn. 85% chance to increase on defense for three turns. 3000 HP revive, 30% MP damage, and 30% uh, defense up. Second skill, which will go with the Mona Lisa A, which she gets after a strengthen. Uh, grant self debuff immunity for two turns. Recover on HP every turn for three turns. Charges on MP gauge by 20% for every turn for three turns. Increases party's art performance for three turns. And that is 100%, 100%, one, that would be crazy. 1,000 HP regeneration and 20% arts damage up. And our third skill is the Pioneer of the Stars EX. Increases on MP gauge, increases on invincibility for three turns, and gains 10 crit stars. And it's a 50% MP charger, just like all the other Pioneers of the Stars. I, I don't remember if I mentioned one quick, one buster, three arts. So you can guess where she's going. Passive skill is a Territory Creation A and Item Construction A. A pen skill for the third skill is a bonus against uh, uh, increased on attack against the Alter Egos. And her Noble Phantasm, which after a ranking, 
is the Universal Man. It hits once, deals damage that ignores defense buff for all enemies, reduces their critical attack chance by 30% for 3 turns. MP damage is, at level 1 is 600%, and at level 5 it is five, it is 900%. Good luck getting that. Increase own MP damage for 1 turn. Charge 100%. It's 30%, and fit, uh, at the final level, it's 70% if you can get it there in terms of MP damage. And yeah, that's Da Vinci. She is a caster who is an AoE arts that hits once. So it's not her fault that arts eventually got taken the way it does, which arts kind of favors because of the way that MP gain works. You actually want multiple hits, and it's kind of bad to only have one, typically. Typically. Um, I'll say right now. So what ends up happening is that she'll shoot off her one blast and then she won't be able to take advantage of the fact that she's going to kill them right afterwards and get like some more stuff afterwards. Be able to get some more NP gain from that, so she kind of suffers from that. So obviously Sherazade is a unit that who is f f not free, but not limited, who is usually the go-to when it comes to if you're going to be using an AoE caster who is arts, you're going to go with, uh, with her most of the time. Uh, and that's kind of unfortunate. I wish that there was more to Da Vinci, because I really like Da Vinci. I could see them eventually, like, upgrading these two skills. But I still think if you're someone who loves Da Vinci, you can definitely still use her. She's still usable. You can definitely use her in maybe some more challenge quest type situations, one where looping isn't 100% needed. Like, this ability right here, I hate that they have this, the 85% chance. I think eventually when she does get a buff, she's either going to get a buff that makes this 100% chance, or they're going to give her a buff that makes it so that 85% is basically 100%, because it's silly that it's there and it can miss. And I'm not misreading anything that says, like, oh, maybe there's something else. You would have to pair her up with someone if you wanted it to not miss, and that's kind of just annoying. But that being said... I think Da Vinci is really cool. I really like Da Vinci, so I wouldn't blame anyone for trying to get Da Vinci. I might end up throwing a single multi to get Da Vinci because I just love Da Vinci that much. And she's not easy to get. I can tell you this right now. There's not many banners that usually have her. So if you're a fan of Da Vinci, um, this is your best shot, basically. <laughs> There's not that many chances for her. If you're a fan of Da Vinci and you want a Da Vinci that's really good, that's Ryder Da Vinci. That's Kid Vinch. That's the one you want. She's the fantastic looper. She was just released too early in the game and she had no way to know that the direction of arts would go the way it is, which is a shame. Ah, <sighs> real shame. I really wish, for many reasons that I won't go into, they could do more with this version of Da Vinci. <laughs> I miss this one so much. Oh, I love her. Anyway, let's go on to the summoning campaign too. Where I'll very quickly say Emiya Alter, just because this is getting longer than I anticipated. Emiya Alter, Detroit Emiya, many other terrible nicknames that he's been given by the Japanese. I think he ends up being just kind of okay from what I can remember. There's nothing too outstanding. I think he is a boss. Oh no, he's actually arts, 10 hits. It's not bad actually. 10 hits on an arts for a single target, I think. Yeah, single target. And some of his skills, he's definitely kind of outshined by the fact that just like his other non alter version is just better than him in many cases. But yeah, I don't have much to say to him just because he is kind of story locked and I've never been able to use him. So I don't have much to say. If you have something specifically to say about your boy, I would love to hear it. If you're especially an Emmy Alter fan or you're a big fan of him, I would love to hear your thoughts about how you how he is. Because I honestly just don't know, which is kind of the thing that sucks about story lock units, is that I'm typically able to use eventually every four star in the game that is in the general pool. Because I limit because I level up a lot of them and I use them, but I can't do that for this guy if I don't actually have him. <laughs> actually I might have him now that I think about it. Have I just avoided never using him? Oh, that's because he's single target and I have like an MP5 saber. Oh, you know what? I'll figure it out later. Maybe I should start doing a series where I start actually starting to figure out some of these older units. Just trying to get a gauge on how good they are or something. But anyway, it's Edgy Emia. Not everyone is the biggest fan of him, and I understand why. There's a lot of just... Honestly, there's just too much baggage around him sometimes, which I don't feel is necessarily deserved. I always feel like he's used appropriately whenever you use him in the story. Except for maybe Shinjuku, where again, yeah, a lot of that, some of that other unfavorable stuff happened. But let's move on. 
Queen of Sheba. A very strong single target caster. If you're into someone who, if you're into, if you're someone who is into the idea of a single target caster who is strong, and you don't have Song Zong or or, or um, oh, I was about to say Emia, no Ilya, not El- Emia, Il- Ilya, then she'll do you perfectly fine, especially because she is a four star, um, with decent, decent skills, decent nice and this, and she'll do you good. I've been able to use her in a lot of challenge quests. That's typically where I've used her the most is in challenge quests. And I've always been very satisfied with her performance there. And yeah, that's Queen of Sheba. She also looks really nice. It's another good factor. Look at this cat. Good cat. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, Musashi. Let's go here. So she is a three, but she's a buster gorilla. Three busters. Two of the other ones. Fifth form A plus deal dumb double the number of hits when normal attacking for three turns. Increase own damage when normal attacking for three turns. Reduce own damage taken for three turns. Second skill is Empyrean I. Oh wait, thirty percent damage up and a thousand when damage taken less. Reduce is the damage reduction. Second skill is the Empyrean I A. Ignores invincibility for one turn. Increase own Buster performance for one turn. It's a fifty percent up Buster up. Uh, nothingness A grants self invincibility for one turn, increases on crit star regeneration rate for three turns, removes own debuffs, and the star rate up is 30%. A pen skill for the third slot is anti berserker. And her noble phantasm, which is a plus here after her strengthening, is a <laughs> deal damage to one enemy, deal 150% extra damage to the alter ego or moon cancer enemies, removes their buffs, increase on MP damage for one turn, 800%. At level 1, and if you get her all the way to the final level, it's 1,200%. Uh, and then increase on MP damage for one turn, and at charge level 1, it's 30%. At charge level 5, it is 90%. And that's this Musashi. She is a single target saber person. And from what I can remember whenever I've seen people talk about her is that I remember people were angry when she got her buff. Because she didn't really need it. <laughs> that was the general consensus. But to be fair, a lot of people in the Fago community really don't like it when, and this is me included sometimes, when they buff characters who are already good and don't need it. And she definitely didn't need it when you think of, of in terms of sabers. Like I mentioned beforehand uh, with um, the four star saber altar how terrible she is and she needs a buff terribly why would they buff musashi when she's already good and she's functioning perfectly fine and the buff that they gave her isn't really is a is a weird buff to give like this is a this is a weird buff if you're not caught up with the story (laughs) it's really bizarre um but yeah it's musashi people love musashi so it doesn't matter what i say about her whether she's strong whether she's bad it's Musashi. You've already made up your mind about whether you want her or not. And who wouldn't want her? Look at this. Dopey. Now, thankfully for me, I have the summer version, which is the looping one that I really like is super good, so I don't really necessarily need this version of Musashi, because I already have plenty of single target um, sabers, so... Not many for Buster, though. I have it for the other ones. I have an MP3 uh, Arts Bride Nero whenever I want to use a single target saber. But that's enough flexing on that. And yeah, that's these two banners. Oops, did I accidentally? Sure did. Let me go back to here. So yeah, I wanted to talk about them, kind of give some thoughts about the units here. I'm sorry I'm not able to give much about this Emia because I really don't know much. And I've been able to use the Sheba a decent amount. I've used Gorgon a decent amount. Everyone knows about the problems of her, and I feel like I give a decent amount about Da Vinci. This is a tough banner, not necessarily because it's like, oh, these are breaking, like, oh my god, you need to get them. They're kind of hard to get units, and some of them are really fan favorites. Like, obviously, a lot of people love Da Vinci, and a lot of people love Musashi. So that's why I said, like, for the most part, they've already summoned. So, <laughs> I there, <laughs> this is not much, I'm not really helping them. I hope you got them if you did end up uh, summoning. Tell me how you did. And in terms of the the CEs, there's nothing too great. This is a fantastic art. I have this one, Max Unlimit Broken, Dangerous Beast, love it. Is it a good CE? Can't really tell you that much about it, but it's really nice to look at in the box, I can say that much. Uh, And yeah, 
that's it for today's video, man. Thank you very much for watching. I should hopefully be... I've been basically resting up. If you did not see my post about it, I've been having some arm issues and it's been really bad. And thankfully, I've been able to rest a decent amount and figure out some stuff about how to kind of work with it. And I'm in a little bit better place than I was and I made that um, post. So hopefully soon I should be back to making more videos and getting back into the swing of things because I definitely like making videos, that's for sure. And yeah, that's it for today's video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.